but you, you got to listen to Pastor Mike speak for a couple of minutes. Isn't that awesome? I mean, aren't you excited about that? I would be excited about that <laughs> if it were me. God is so good. Um, it's, it really is an exciting thing to see. Um, not only the young children that want to get baptized today, but also these five gentlemen. You know, that to me, that's just an awesome thing to see these five men that have given their lives to Christ, have repented of their sins, and are born again, and they want to they want to testify to the world because that's really what this this is. Water baptism is a is a, a a service where we are proclaiming our faith in Jesus Christ and what He did for us, and we're proclaiming the gospel. The the second song that we sang, I believe, we're proclaiming that Jesus Christ is is God, but that He became a man, and that He that He was crucified. He died on the cross. That He was buried. And that he, he was raised again on the third day. And, you know, and, and apart from that, we have no hope. The fact that Jesus was raised from the dead gives us hope that we too shall be raised from the dead. That's what the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 11. It says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, then he will give, power, he will give life to your mortal body. See, your body is mortal, and that means it's going to die. Every one of us is going to die. It's mortal, but he says, but the Bible says that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, then he will give life to your mortal body. That means your mortal body will be raised again just as Christ was raised from the dead. And that's the picture of water baptism. Water baptism is a picture of the death and burial going down under the water. That's why we believe in total immersion. And, and then coming up out of the water, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we, will, that we too have a new life, new life in Christ. That's the picture of water baptism, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it, it, it pictures also what we're doing. The word in, in the Greek is the word baptizo, and it means to immerse, to dip. And it was used in ancient Greek of dyeing garments, mostly. And for a garment to be, complete, to be dyed, if you wanted to dye a garment gray like this one, take away the letters, uh, you'd have to completely, totally immerse it into the dye. And so that's why we believe in total immersion is water baptism. And we believe that this is something that must be done by someone that is old enough to understand what he is doing. Sometimes, you know, in the past, I, I've, I've been hesitant to have children under 12 be baptized because I want to make sure that they know that they're doing, that it's a public proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But all of these uh, have really uh, exhibited that, that they understand what is happening today. And so it's just awesome to me. Um, you know, even to the point of repenting of their sins and crying over, over, over the, the reality of the fact that there is a hell, but that we've been saved from it by Jesus Christ. That's why we can sing that we have peace, you know. You know, healing rain. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because Jesus Christ paid the price. He paid the price for us to have eternal life. And it was, and, the, and, God, and Paul said that, and God has given proof of all of this to all men by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. And then this is what the disciples said, that they were eyewitnesses. They saw this with their very eyes. This is what Peter said. He said, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They saw this happen. And so today we're going to see... Uh, these ones come and give testimony and witness to what Jesus Christ has done in their lives. I just want to read a few verses of Scripture. I don't want to speak too long today. I'm not actually preaching, but I wanted to read Romans 1. 1, 1, 6. This is our, our youth group is called 1, 1, 6. And it's based on Romans 1, verse 16. And I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. This is what Romans 1, 1, 6 says. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel being this, that Jesus uh, became a man, that he uh, was crucified, that he died and was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is, and here, it is the power of God for, every, for the salvation of everyone who believes. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew and then for the Gentile. For in the gospel... 
A righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see, the, the, the gospel tells us that it's no longer, salvation is no longer based on whether our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds. But it's based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross and his grace that he gives us this gift of salvation if we will believe in him. If we will put our faith in him. And he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Now, there's only two places in the, in the scriptures where, where God, Paul rather, talks about the gospel and shame in the same, in the same breath. And the other place is in 2 Timothy. We used this three, three weeks ago when I spoke. And let me just, again, go there. Because, uh, because they're not ashamed of the gospel, each one of these today is going gonna, is gonna to publicly testify to you about their faith in Jesus Christ. But listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1. Verses 8 through 12, he says, So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. Now, why would they be ashamed to testify about the Lord? We talked about this a few weeks ago. Well, well, two reasons, or of, of me. And he gives it right there, or of me, he says, his prisoner. You see, in the first century, Jesus Christ was considered a criminal. And he was crucified as a criminal. And all of these People were putting their faith in this man who was a criminal. And Paul himself was a prisoner. And so, to speak out for Jesus Christ, even though considered a criminal, was not an easy thing to do. Not much unlike what is happening in our own country today where it is becoming increasingly more and more difficult for us to speak the name of Jesus Christ without being considered a criminal. Can you believe it? It's amazing to me. Anyway, I don't want to preach about that. Anyway, let's get back to where we were. But join with me, he says, in suffering for the gospel. How by the power of God, there it is again, that, that the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Romans 1.16 because it is the power of God. And here he says, so do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or about, ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel. How by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, here it is, not because, here's grace, not because of anything that we have done but because of his own purpose and grace, grace, a free gift, undeserved. None of us deserves it, but he freely gives it to us because he loves us, because he paid the price on the cross. This grace, it says, was given us in Christ Jesus when? Before the beginning of time. Listen, before the worlds were created, God had a plan. He knew that man was going to fall, and so he had a plan. He says, I'm gonna, I, I have a plan right now that I'm going to sacrifice my son, and he's going to pay the penalty. He's going to pay the price so that they can be rescued from prison, resurrected. So he says here, before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. Who has destroyed death? Jesus has destroyed death. Every one of us has to go through it. That's what baptism means. It means going through the water. That's baptism. We also have to be baptized into death, every one of us. But Jesus has destroyed death. And what has he done? He's brought life and immortality to life. You see, our mortal bodies will be made alive. He's brought life and immortality to light. Through what Jesus Christ has done, we can know today, now, not because of our good deeds, outweighing our bad deeds, but because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, we can know today that I have eternal life. That this mortal body may die, but it's going to be, it, it's going to be raised immortal. It's corruptible now, but it's going to be raised incorruptible. That's the promise of God, that he has, brought, he has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. How? Through the gospel. That's why we're not ashamed of the gospel, because even though they kill us, it doesn't matter. We have eternal life. We are immortal. Those of us who have put our faith in Christ, that's what each one of these believes. And we'll be testifying in just a few moments. And of this gospel, he says, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And that is why I am suffering as I am. But he says, yet I am not ashamed. Because I know whom I have believed. And am convinced that he is able. It's the same root word for power that he uses. That he has power to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. 
And this is what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. A new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. The new has come. Every one of us who acknowledges that Jesus Christ is Lord and puts our faith in Jesus Christ, he takes away the old man. And he takes out the heart of stone, it says in Ezekiel chapter 11 and Ezekiel chapter 36. He takes out that heart of stone, that hard heart that we have. And he replaces it with a heart of flesh. He makes us soft and pliable, able to be used by him. Well, that's what each one of these has decided to proclaim today. And that's what this is. Water baptism is a public proclamation of our faith in Jesus Christ. Water baptism does not save us. We are not saved because we're water baptized. We are water baptized because we are saved. That's really the last thing I want to I want to share. And some people think, well, you know, you, you have to be water baptized to, to be saved. And I think the strongest evidence that really says that that's not so much true is what Paul says to the Corinthians in chapter 1, verse 17 of his first letter to them. He says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. You see, if, if water baptism was essential to salvation, the apostle Paul would never have said, Christ did not send me to baptize. What did he send me to do? To preach the gospel. You see, they have believed the gospel. They believe the good news that Jesus Christ was, is God, that he became a man, that he died, that he was crucified, died and was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. That's the gospel. He, says, he said, Christ Jesus did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. You see, the power to change a life is not in the act, this, this act of going into the water. It's in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That's the power to change your life. That's where the grace comes from. This, what we're doing today, this is, we do it because Jesus told us to do it. Matthew 28, verse 19, he said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching us to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. You see, we're doing this today as an act of obedience. We are walking in obedience to what Jesus Christ said. He says, go, make disciples, and baptize them. We're saved by the gospel. We're saved by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so just before Isaac's going to be the first one that comes, but just before he comes, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Luke Whipple to come up. He's going to say a few things, and then he's going to lead us in prayer, and then we're going to begin with the water baptizing. And this is awesome. Uh, and, and, and Pastor Luke will be coming and speaking here uh, soon, maybe uh, July or August. We haven't actually set the date yet, but, but he has an invitation, and we're going to make sure that he does that. So uh, this is Crystal's son, and this is Isaac's uncle. So let's welcome Luke real quick. Wait, man, I am, uh, I am here to celebrate. Are you here to celebrate? Amen. Amen. And I'm so here, I was so excited that I brought my camera up, so I, uh, it's good you called me up, so I have a great angle here to, to film this. But I am excited not, not only for Isaac, uh, but for everybody who's getting baptized in the, in the work that Jesus has done in your life to transform you. And uh, Pastor Mike, that was a short sermon, but man, can you pack a lot in a little space, <laughs> you know? So, but uh, what you were saying reminded me so much of Romans chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul says, those of us who have been baptized have been buried with Christ. And then he goes on to say, but Christ has been made alive in the glory of the Father. And so are not we given new life? Are we not made alive? So this beautiful picture that we have of baptism is this picture of the old being put to death, being buried, and the new being made alive. So let's pray with that in mind. Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we thank you for the power of your son, the power um, that was demonstrated by his love on the cross, that he would die for us, and the power that was uh, vindicated through his resurrection. And that resurrection life is given to us through the blood of Jesus. And it is represented today in this, in this baptism that is about to happen with these candidates. 
That new life that comes through Christ is a new life in their hearts, is an expansion of the reign of the kingdom of God in this world as it transfers from heart to heart. So Lord, we pray you bless this time. We pray that your spirit continues to work and move amongst us as we're gathered here today. In your holy name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.